Well, this is the view on a Saturday that Ian Wright gets charging towards goal. Well, I'm not in that sort of league at all, but Ian, it does look a wide enough goal. Why you can't get more, I don't understand. However, Deb spoke to Ian earlier in the week when he'd just come back from his England B call-up. Good luck to you for the future, Ian. Hello and welcome. In the studio today, we've got Ian Wright, the superstar of Crystal Palace. Ian, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for having me. I think the first thing we'd be interested to know, obviously, is the incredible prestige you've won to yourself and the club of being picked for the England B squad at the moment, isn't it? Mm. I, was, I was quite pleased about it because um, I wasn't expecting it because last time I was on um, standby and then this time somebody came and said that I've been picked for the actual team and I didn't believe it until you know I went and looked at the teletext. And that's when you saw. Mm. So what was it like, your first match at Millwall on last Tuesday? It was very nerve-wracking, the first first 20 minutes, which I, if anybody went down there, I'm sure they could have seen, but uh, uh, halfway through the half, it was, it was more comfortable. I kind of got into it a lot more. Is it unusual for you to be nervous on the pitch? Well, I'm, I'm not usually that nervous because the Palace games, and I'm, I'm, like, I know everybody and all that, and, you know, I wasn't as nervous as I, as, as I used to be when I first started out with Palace. But, um, for this England game, I was, I was so nervous, I didn't know how I was going to cope with it. Is it very different playing in, in the World Cup squads than in league games? Yeah, I would have thought so, yeah, because it's more technical um, when you play on the international kind of level, because you're passing and your, your control's got to be smack on, you know. So, you know, you've got to be more, let me see, it's a skill factor comes in it more than the, um, the running and aggressive like, play of it. So, how did you feel? I know at half time that uh, another player was given a run. Yeah. How did you feel about that? I was a bit disappointed because as the game was going on, like I was saying, um, I got into it a lot more. So I was disappointed, but saying that um, I know I'll get another chance, so I won't be bothered mm. really. It's all right. I think I did enough on the day to show them that I can do a bit. So, what's the future now with the England B squad? Well, I just want to get in there and establish myself as the, um, one of the main strikers, and they could pick around me as well, you know, pick, like make me the main player and then pick someone to play with me rather than me coming in pick, playing alongside someone else. Right, so you've got an England uh, cap now and I know that I think you've been with Palace three years, is that right? What was before then? Well, I just played Sunday morning football and um, I played for Greenwich Borough and um, played a couple of games for Greenwich Borough. Well, that sounds like every lad's dream. Yeah. It, was, um, it was surprising at first because at the start of the 85 season I didn't know who I was going to sign for. I could have signed for Greenwich Borough or Dulwich Hamlet. And then um, on, when we was doing our pre-season training at Dulwich Hamlet, um, they said Crystal Palace was watching me and then it went from there. They gave yeah. me a two-week trial and that was it. So that was Steve Copper, was it, mm. that, that spotted you there? Mm. Well, it wasn't Steve Copper. He was the one who told him to come and watch me. It was Stuart Scott, one of the um, scouts down there. Mm. So you've always uh, pl been playing football in the South London area? Mm. Yeah. And three years faithfully with Crystal Palace. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I always, well, Palace is just up the road for me and everything. You know, it's, it's even closer to Millwall, you know, Palace to me. And um, I never went there much, but um, it's only five minutes away from my house and the training ground's only 20 minutes away, so I wouldn't really want to upend and leave. So how do you see your future with the Palace? Well, I, like, as long as we're in the first division, it's no problem, you know, because, like, it's the only place to play. And if Palace stay in there, I'd want to stay with Palace, obviously, but I'm as ambitious as the next man if we don't. Mm -hmm. Like, which I haven't got no qualms of us staying in there, I'm sure we will. But if we don't, I'll have to, like, start thinking about um, moving on or mm -hmm. whatever. Well, I had heard that uh, a million pounds was, in fact, a transfer fee that had been offered. Yeah, well, that's the... Well, like I said earlier, you know, it's just like the inflated market, you know. It's not like a personal... That's how much I would cost. It's just what you have to pay to, nowadays between the clubs. It's the two clubs. It's nothing to do with the player or the price they put on you. So, so you know, it doesn't matter to me what they put on you. So you're not tempted to move to any other clubs at this present time? No, not this time, no. And I did also hear that you're a Liverpool supporter yourself. Yeah, I used to support them a lot when I was younger. Because Kevin Keegan, obviously. Because when, when I was younger, I was quite small. And to see Kevin Keegan doing it yeah, with the best, you know, when he was so small, I used to want to like, be like him. And so at the time he was playing with Liverpool, I wanted to play for Liverpool as well. I see. And uh, I know that you have a very good on-field uh, relationship with Mark Bright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is that also off the pitch? Yeah, yeah, we get together a lot socially. We do quite a lot together. 
Do you think that helps on the pitch? Yeah, I'd have thought so, because we know the ins and outs of each other on and off the pitch, so, you know, each other's moods and everything. I think mm. it's quite good. I see. And uh, what is your opinion on the defence now at Palace, with the signing of Nigel Martin and Andy Thorne? Well, the thing, I've never had a bad opinion on them, really, in the first place. Um, it's just that we was unlucky when we first came in the first division. We made mistakes and, like, you know, we got punished by getting, like, people scoring. And then, ultimately, Liverpool, which we all know what happened there. How did you actually feel after that match? It was like a devastating feeling. I've never felt like that since um, when I was playing Sunday morning football and I got beaten by a team called Grove by the same score. It was like, you know, you, you can't really um, explain how you feel afterwards. You, you feel, like, useless, you feel, like, degraded. Because they really, they really did slaughter us that day. They played magnificent.